Hey everyone, I'm live. I'm just a few minutes early. Um, so, you know, I'm just getting things started, waiting to see who might want to join on this adventure of thinking about uncertainty and how we might get some clarity. Um, I'm going to be typing some things into the chat while we're waiting to get started. Um, I'm going to be typing in my website where you can find me um, if you want to connect. And um, I'm going to hopefully be sharing with you guys some really, really helpful information. I'm so excited about this because this is a topic that is so near and dear to my heart. Um, uh, one of the biggest reasons for that is because um, I've navigated a lot of uncertainty throughout my career and I've met with um, success and I've also met with some resistance and challenges and obstacles. And it's really those those moments of resistance and challenge and obstacles where um, you really learn so much about yourself. And so that's why my main goal is to encourage so many of you to think about this moment in time right here is such an incredible opportunity. I know it doesn't feel like it every day. Like every day it's kind of like, how do I get out of bed today? Um, but it really is such a fantastic opportunity to get to know ourselves and to get to know what we already know about how we need to take care of ourselves in challenging times. So um, first of all, I want to thank you for being here on a Friday night. <laughs> I know this isn't the most ideal time for everyone. So thank you so much. Um, so I'm going to share with you, um, you know, what what led me to this point in my life and what uh, what I'm doing right now, and then I'm going to share some really simple steps that you can take to navigate your own uncertainty in your life. So I became a musician for my career many, many years ago. And throughout that entire time, I experienced a lot of doubt and insecurity and fears and worries and so much uncertainty. Was I really going to make it as a musician? What if what if I don't get another job? Um, what's going to happen next? There was a lot of what's going to happen next. Um, but there were things that I loved about my career and still do. I am still a musician, in fact, even though in these pandemic times, it doesn't always feel like it. Um, I loved playing beautiful music with beautiful people. And I love I love teaching. Uh, students who are engaged in the learning process. And I love watching them have those aha moments of, oh yeah, I never thought of it that way. And that it completely shifts them in a moment. I love having listeners tell me that the music that I played for them touched them deeply. Those are some of the best moments ever when you know you've gotten through to someone. But then there were the things I really didn't like about my career. The lifestyle of oftentimes working seven days a week was challenging, is challenging. Um, feeling like I was always begging to be paid for my freelancing jobs. Nobody likes to beg for money. It just, it feels awful. The lack of job security, certainly. The competition. I'm not the kind of person that likes competition. I know those people exist out there, but unfortunately, I am just not one of those people. Um, so if you do like competition, awesome. That is such a great skill to have. And also, I didn't like having to take on more work if I wanted to get a raise. You know, year after year, I'd look at my budget and I'd say, gosh, it would feel so much better if I could just be making a little bit more. And then I'd have to take on more work. Also, not really feeling fully valued by my society, a society that seemed like it was constantly moving away from the arts. Although I'm 
getting glimmers of hope as I watch Facebook in these days of the pandemic and watching all of the classical musicians out there share their music. It is such an incredible experience to see how much you guys, how we all are valued in these times. So anyway, throughout all of that uncertainty, I considered pursuing something else, but I could never really decide what I wanted to pursue. I'd invested so much time and energy already into music. I'd gotten my doctorate and I'd been working as an adjunct instructor at some points at three different private colleges and a community music school and a therapeutic musician and just so, so many things. Um, and so I kept going, even though I was uncertain, it was the known and comfortable thing for me to do. This unfortunately led me to some pretty severe career burnout. If any of you have ever experienced that, it can feel a lot like um, depression, severe fatigue all the time, not wanting to get out of bed in the morning. Um, it was physical pain for me all over my body. And that was when I knew that I had to change something. And as Socrates said, the only wisdom in knowing is knowing that you know nothing. And that was something that career burnout taught me that I needed to sit with the fact that I didn't know the answer and I needed to take some time out to figure out what that was. I've been fighting for so long about not knowing. So I realized too that I hadn't really been checking in with myself to see whether I was honoring myself and all the decisions to, to say yes to every single gig that came my way. Um, and you know, I was saying yes to everything because I was so uncertain. Well, I, I have to say yes to this one because what if the next one doesn't come along? I just, I don't know. Or what if they don't ever ask me again? So anyway, because of burnout, I could finally see how uncertainty was really keeping me indecisive and preventing me from moving forward. And that was keeping me completely stuck. So what did I do? I decided to take control of my career and cre create one that reflected my values, who I was, my passion, my unique gifts. In other words, I decided to let myself be me. The process of working through uncertainty and burnout made me stronger as a person, as a musician. And it made me remember who I was and why I made certain choices and how I could make my choices align with my values. And I realized I didn't need certainty in order to be confident and trust myself. And I also realized that I needed to stop waiting for something outside of myself to change in order to start making some changes inside first. So this led me to launching my coaching business where I help creative professionals work through their own uncertainties so they can manifest a life that honors and reflects who they are. When you can do you, you'll never be stuck again. So I wanna tell you a little story about uncertainty um, that happened very early in my life. It was the first day of kindergarten and I was very, very nervous about going. I really, I really didn't want to go. I was afraid that nobody was going to like me. I was afraid that they'd laugh at me. I was afraid I wouldn't fit in. I wouldn't be smart enough, all those things. And I didn't know what to do because I couldn't go home. And I didn't feel comfortable, you know, joining with all of the kids. They were so rowdy, just running around and yelling and screaming and everything. Um, and so what I did was that I went to the thing in that moment that helped me feel the most like me than anything else in the world. And at that time in my life, when I was five, that was singing. So here I am in the midst of all of these people, you know, running around these, these kids my age, and I just start singing. And I was a huge Annie fan, so, you know, I'm singing tunes to Annie, and um, I wasn't really paying attention because I was just focusing on doing that thing that made me feel comfortable within myself. 
And pretty soon I got to the end of a song and all of a sudden I, I heard people clapping and I didn't understand what was going on. And all of a sudden I realized, oh, whoops, all of the kids had gathered around me listening to my singing. And then, you know, they clapped and then it was time to start my first day of school. And so what I learned from that experience was that connecting to myself and honoring myself and being authentically myself made me feel much more comfortable in an uncomfortable situation when I didn't know what was going to happen. And it also helped me feel a lot more connected to everybody and everything that was going on around me. So that little story really outlines what I'm going to share with you today about navigating the uncertainty in your life. The first step of coming to terms with uncertainty and getting some clarity is to accept whatever is happening. And this is probably one of the hardest and biggest steps, right? I mean, there's a lot going on right now that's really hard to accept. It's hard to come to terms with it. But as they say, the more you resist, the more it persists. And so we have to accept what's going on no matter what. So once you can take a look at that acceptance, you can also take a look at what you're trying to control in your life. You know, what are these things that you're trying to control in your life and make different? What are you not wanting to accept? Because no matter how much you don't want to accept something, it's still going to be that way in reality. So one thing you can do if you're noticing that you just want to take control, you just want to feel like you're in control no matter what, one thing you can do is ask yourself, why? Why do you need to be in control right now? What is that really going to do for you? How is being in control serving you? So when I relinquish my need to control things in my life, when I'm experiencing uncertainty, I notice that the spinning wheels in my head that are trying to figure out how can I make this different? How can I control this? When I start to say, why are you trying to control this? I realize, oh, I guess it's kind of pointless to let these spinny wheels keep going on. I guess I'll just relax. And then I can start to take some deep breaths and settle into myself again. It's important to give yourself permission to not know what's going to happen or give yourself permission to not have to take action. You don't have to do something when you're feeling uncertain. You can just let it be. We tend to want to reach for our usual emotional band-aids in moments of uncertainty, you know, like, oh, let me call so-and-so and, and talk it out with them. Or um, let me eat this food. Let me send a whole bunch of emails and tell people what I think. Let me, let me go to social media. That's one of people's favorites, right? And then we get stuck scrolling, seeing if we can control. I'm guilty of it too. I totally admit that. But the wisdom in not taking action is that you get to understand what your experience right now really is. What are you experiencing? What is this that's going on? What is this uncertainty? And um, you can finally see exactly where you are in that uncertainty. So acceptance is that first step. Accept that you don't have all the answers right now. Accept that you don't have to do anything right now. Accept anything that's out of your control and accept the discomfort that's coming up for you. And that's actually the next step. Step two in this process is taking a moment to tune in to your discomfort. I know, I didn't say this was going to be easy. It might be simple, but it's not easy. So we need to take a look at what our discomfort really is trying to tell us. 
this is an uncomfortable time. There's so many feelings that I know are coming up for everybody. And we tend to lash out when those feelings are overwhelming us. We lash out at other people. We lash out at ourselves. And we just get angry all the time. And not only do we have these the feelings of discomfort coming up, but now if we're taking it out on other people, now we're feeling bad about taking it out on other people. Ugh, double badness, right? So it can be a challenge in the moment of extreme uncertainty to really allow yourself to recognize your feelings because that first instinct is to push it away. And our feelings seem so valid and, and we're so justified in the moment based on the stories that we're telling ourselves on the thoughts and the feelings that we're having. And if we believe that story that we're telling ourselves, the feelings will definitely persist. That discomfort will really persist. But if we start to question the story that we're telling ourselves and sit with the feelings, we can start to feel a little bit calmer. It can start to open up some space to let the discomfort spread out, not be so concentrated in one spot in our bodies. When we're more calm, we start to see what the next best step is going to be. So according to studies from Harvard, it takes about 90 seconds for humans to identify an emotion, to experience it and allow it to dissipate. 90 seconds, one and a half minutes. So how able do you think you would be able to sit with an emotion, with a discomfort for 90 seconds? For some reason that feels a little bit more tolerable to me when I know that it's not gonna last forever. I know it's intense right now, but it's going to get a little bit better as time passes. So when you are feeling discomfort, it's important to ask the discomfort questions. There's so much to learn from it. You can ask your discomfort questions like, what is this feeling? Name it. See if you can come up with you know, what, what it is that you're experiencing. Also ask, what does this feeling want me to know right now? Our emotions are constantly communicating with us. It is information for us. We're just not always used to listening to it. Our thoughts come in, in the form of words, but our emotions come in the form of feelings. And so when you haven't practiced listening to that language, it can be challenging at first. But the more practice you have with it, it gets easier. So then, once you've questioned the discomfort, you can acknowledge and validate whatever feelings are coming up for you. So many things are overwhelming and uncertain right now. It makes all the sense in the world that whatever you're feeling is there. Of course you're feeling that way. It makes all the sense in the world. Whether it's fear, worry, frustration, dread, anxiety, exhaustion, all of those things, of course, that would be the response. Giving a why to what you're feeling often helps that feeling to soften. It lets you settle down a little bit. You're not resisting it anymore. So step three, once you've accepted and you've sat with the discomfort, now it's time to think about who, who are you? How can you authentically be you in this moment through the uncertainty and the discomfort? Who are you? What drives or motivates you? What are your values right now? What are your beliefs that make you feel at home in yourself? 
What gets you fired up and what doesn't get you fired up? Know what draws you in versus what pushes you away. And there's no judgment about that. Everyone's different about what they value, what draws them in, what motivates them. What motivates you doesn't have to look the same as everyone else. So once you've ground, grounded yourself in who you are, that's when your next step can really take shape. So to the best of your ability, take part in this thing that makes you feel home in yourself. So what is something that everyone close to you knows about you? What is that thing that if they're introducing you to someone, they say, hey, this is my friend so-and-so, they're the one that, and then out comes the thing that truly identifies you to your core. Maybe it's a band, a book, a movie, an experience that you shared with that person that, that really resonated. Maybe it's a place, maybe it's a hobby, maybe it's your career, I don't know. It could be anything but it's that thing that really makes you feel at home in yourself. You have no doubts about that part of yourself. Be mindful that this thing is a healthy thing. Um, just wanna put that out there. So then you can take action on that thing that you know to be you and who you are. Um, for example, in my story, I knew in kindergarten that singing was my grounding activity. I probably didn't know it, you know, cerebrally, consciously, but that's just kind of what I, I intuited that I needed to do in that moment to help me feel better. And fortunately, I was right. Um, so think of that thing that maybe you could do in a moment of uncertainty that helps you feel more grounded in yourself. If you can't actually take part in that thing, you know, if it's, well, I feel most myself when I'm with this person, but I can't be with this person right now because pandemic, or maybe they're not here right now, or maybe you're out of town or whatever that is, or maybe it's a favorite restaurant, or maybe it's, I love going to concerts, but concerts are ha aren't happening right now. If you can't participate in that thing, that makes you feel like you, that's okay. Take a moment to just sit with a memory of doing that. Close your eyes, take some deep breaths, relive an experience of doing that. Remember everything about that and just center in it. Remember who you are. And that's what you're doing in that moment. Your brain really doesn't know the difference actually. Yeah, you do, but your brain really doesn't. So the nice thing is that when you're experiencing something that reflects who you are, you're gonna be releasing all of those chemicals that uplift you. You're gonna to start to feel a little bit better through those memories. So use this, it's kind of a meditation. It's just, it's also just kind of a, you know, time out for yourself. You can use it as a morning or an evening ritual. Um, you can use it in the middle of the day if you start to feel really overwhelmed. But once you feel at home within yourself again, you can start to feel clear about what it is that you wanna do next without the need for, well, I can't do anything unless X, Y, or Z changes, right? When we're feeling uncertain, we want so badly for whatever's on the outside preventing us from feeling good to just change. We just, we just want the outside world to change so badly. But when that can't happen, you can at least turn inside and you can reflect again on who you are and then maybe take the steps from that point, from your inner knowing self. Being clear about expressing the essence of who you are, even in the smallest acts, can bring clarity in the most challenging of times. One of the best examples of this is um, Viktor Frankl, the psychologist who wrote Man's Search for Meaning. He spent um, 
three or four years in four different concentration camps during World War II. And he discovered in the process of that, that maintaining a connection to the things that held meaning for him was what helped him survive more than anything else. He wasn't a particularly strong, physically strong person. He watched many strong people perish, actually, because they didn't have that connection to the things in their lives that were really meaningful. Highly recommend reading that book, by the way, if you haven't already, Man's Search for Meaning by Viktor Frankl. Um, so finding that connection to what holds meaning for you, super important. So as soon as this event has ended, what I want you to do is I want you to take out a piece of paper and I want you to write down whatever the biggest uncertainty in your life is right now. And then I want you to go through the steps that I outlined above. I want you to think about how can you accept what's going on? How can you sit with the discomfort? And then connect with who you truly are and start to think of ways that you can demonstrate who you are to the external world. So based on the fact that you showed up tonight on a Friday night, no less, I know something about you. One, you're feeling pretty uncertain in these times. Two, you're interested in finding a healthy way through this uncertainty. And three, maybe you're just not into going out much these days, kind of like I am. So um, hopefully this has helped um, in your process of navigating the uncertainty right now. So many people are going through it. If you're in a situation right now that um, you're experiencing so much uncertainty and you're feeling really stuck, I wanna let you know that I'm here. I'm available for one-on-one -on -one coaching. Um, if you wanna explore what that would be like, I offer complimentary sessions so you can try it on for size. Um, I'm also offering a group coaching experience starting on October 18th. It's called the Hero's Journey. And um, it's a five week group coaching experience where each week the group gathers for about an hour and a half. And we talk about a different topic about becoming your own hero in times like this. And, and really learning how to use some tools that you already have inside of you to navigate some of these uncertain times and get you out of feeling like you're stuck. So I'd love to have you join that. You can find more information about that on my website, which I've included in the chat. Um, my website is www.tess-miller.com. I'd love it if you'd fill out the contact form. This will um, allow you to get the uh, newsletter that I write each month. Um, it'll give you access to other free um, resources. And um, speaking of free resources, I mentioned values earlier and I actually have a values um, assessment exercise that you can do that's a available for free on my website. You just download it and it gives you an exercise that you can use to discover what your values are. Um, and so that's on my website. It's my website backslash resources. And um, I'd love it if you'd check back on my Facebook business page um, or my website and check out any other updates and events that I might be doing. So again, um, please, if you want to connect with me for that complimentary session, please either comment in this Facebook Live video or you can visit my website and sign up right there on my services page and we can get rolling on that. Thank you again. Good luck to you all. Light and love to you and take care.